In this town lies the Sensoji, the oldest temple in Tokyo, Nakamise Dori, the oldest shopping street, the Ginza Line, the oldest subway, and Hanayashiki, the oldest amusement park in Japan. The town of Asakusa is indeed embraced by a rich history. At the same time, it is adorned with modern elements such as the sky tree, the world's second tallest structure, and the futuristic designed Sumida River water buses. But how was this charming city, where history and the present beautifully march, formed? Hi, I'm Atsu, the owner of this channel. This time, we will focus on Asakusa's origins, tragedies and recovery, contemporary appeal, and the future. This is a story of Asakusa, the good old town in Tokyo. An indispensable part of the history of Asakusa is Sensoji, the oldest temple still existing in Tokyo. Its origins date back to 628 AD, when two brothers fishing in the Sumida River accidentally caught a golden statue in their net. Upon returning to their village and showing the statue to a wise man, it was recognized as Kannon, the Buddhist goddess of compassion. Impressed by the divinity of the statue, the brothers converted their own house into a temple to enshrine it. This event marks the beginning of the long history of Sensoji. About 300 years later, in 942, a warlord who governed the area undertook the temple's maintenance, and it is said that the iconic Kaminarimon, or Thunder Gate, was established around this time. Its official name is Fujin Naijimo, named after the two statues of gods of wind and thunder that stand on either side of the gate, built to protect Asakusa from floods and fires. The gate's massive lead lantern, engraved with the kanji for Kaminarimo, measures 3.9 meters in height and 3.3 meters in width. The gate has experienced numerous destructions and reconstructions over the years, but mourned as later. Additionally, the two brothers who discovered the Kanon statue and the wise man became worshipped, known as Sanja Sama or Three Divine Men. The Sanja Matsuri, celebrating them, began in 1312. Held every March, this spring festival features portable shrines crossing the Sumida River by boat, captivating Asakusa's residents. As the Warring States period drew to a close, the early 17th century saw the beginning of the Tokugawa Shogunate's reign. During this era, significant land development in Edo, today's Tokyo, took place, with Asakusa becoming a key gathering spot, attracting a large influx of people, goods, and money. A pivotal factor in this transformation was the establishment of rice warehouses in Asakusa. The Sumida River, crucial for transporting rice and timber, played a vital role in supporting Edo's urban development. These warehouses stored rice for the common folk and the samurai working in Edo Castle, functioning as both a salary and a food supply. Moreover, merchants emerged who would exchange rice for cash, akin to modern bankers, earning substantial profits by serving both samurai and retailers. Their affluent lifestyle contributed to the flourishing of Edo culture in Asakusa, with the development of entertainment districts rich in theatrical genres like kabuki, and the relocation of yukaku, look who's meeting up yourself, adding vibrancy to the area. The Sumida River Fireworks Festival, also believed to have started in this period to comfort the spirits of deceased, became a hallmark event of the town. Another significant change was observed at Sensoji Temple. Due to the repeated destruction since medieval times, it was rebuilt in the 17th century with the support of Tokugawa shogunate, attracting numerous pilgrims. The increase in visitors led to residents obtaining special permission to sell goods along the temple's approach, culminating in the formation of Nakamise, Japan's oldest shopping street in 1685. As the samurai era ended and the westernization progressed under the new government, modernization began to sweep through Asakusa. By 1870, rickshaws had become a common sight nationwide, symbolizing Asakusa to this day. The bustling Asakusa Lokku Entertainment District emerged west of Sensor's Temple. Lokku denotes a sixth block in the Asakusa Park development, a nickname that stuck. Rooted in Asakusa's traditional theatrical culture, the area flourished with showbiz buildings. Notably, facilities for opera and musical performances, and in 1903, the opening of Japan's first permanent cinema, Asakusa Denkikan. In addition, in 1889, a 12-story brick observation tower, Dōungaku, was constructed in this entertainment district. Designed by Scottish engineer William K. Burton, 
This building established its status as Tokyo's first skyscraper. It also featured Japan's first electric elevator, attracting significant attention. In 1904, trams began to enter the streets of Asakusa, marking the first time railways were laid in this town. Interestingly, Asakusa with its tram is depicted in Season 1, Episode 7 of Demon Slayer. However, in this episode, the Kaminarimon Gate is not shown in front of the shopping street. The truth is that the gate had been destroyed by fire in 1866 and therefore did not exist at that time. Temporary gates were erected in the same location several times, but it was not permanently rebuilt until after the war. We have, so far, explored the origins of Asakusa and how this town has transformed through the era of samurai and the period of industrial development. However, from the 1920s onwards, Asakusa has faced numerous crises. Here, we will look at the various challenges Asakusa encountered and how they were overcome. In 1923, Asakusa faced a devastating event, the Great Kanto Earthquake. This calamity led to around 4,500 fatalities and missing persons in the Taito district, including Asakusa, with 93% of its buildings being lost to flames. The Dōunkaku Tower, symbolizing the quake's extensive damage, was never rebuilt due to financial woes leading to its demolition. While Nagamise Street suffered greatly, Senso's temple's main hall was spared, becoming a refuge for those escaping the fires, filling its ground with evacuees. Reconstruction commenced swiftly, with Nakamise being reborn in 1925 as a reinforced concrete with a new vermilion river. In 1927, Asakusa Station was inaugurated as a part of Tokyo Metro Ginza Line, the first subway in Asia. By 1931, the Tobe Railway had extended its service to include the station, leading to the construction of the Asakusa Station building. This building, a seven-story structure featuring Art Deco style, housed department stores, a rare architectural feat for the time. Despite the Pacific War starting in 1941, imposing restrictions on entertainment, Asakusa's vibrancy was captured in 1943 photos. Yet, in the early hours of March 10, 1945, a nightmare struck this town. 325 B-20s launched from the Mariana Islands dropped 13,000 napium incendiary bombs on the downtown area of Asakusa. The densely packed wooden houses of Asakusa and other downtown areas of Tokyo were turned into a sea of fire overnight. This night of air race resulted in approximately 84,000 deaths, surpassing the 74,000 fatalities caused by the atomic bomb dropped on Nagasaki. The streets of Asakusa were turned into a burnt field, and almost all the buildings within the grounds of Senso's temple were lost. The Nakamise street was also hit by the air raid, leaving only the concrete outer walls. The damage from the air raids on Asakusa was severe, but thanks to the efforts of the residents, post-war reconstruction progressed swiftly. In 1948, the traditional Sanja Matsuri, dating back to the 14th century, was resumed, and by 1950, its symbolic portable shrines were revived, solving by its status as perennial symbol of Asakusa. Following this, with financial support from Emperor Hirohito, the main hall of Senso's temple, damaged during the war, was rebuilt in 1958. In 1960, thanks to a donation from Konosuke Matsushita, the founder of Panasonic, the Kaminari Mon Gate was reconstructed using reinforced concrete completed with its distinctive lantern. In 1973, the temple's five-story pagoda was rebuilt, forming the contemporary Sensoji Temple. Around this time, the nearby Hanayashiki Park introduced Japan's first domestic roller coaster in 1953, establishing its status as the country's oldest amusement park. Also, two new arcades were built around this time. Asakusa Nishisando Arcade with its overhead glass ceiling in 1954 and Asakusa Underground Shopping Street in 1955, which is arguably the oldest of its kind. However, Asakusa faced challenges in regaining its former bustle. While 1958 saw record 1.1 billion movie goals nationwide, by 1975, with an 80% television penetration rate, cinema attendance dropped to 200 million. The removal of many tram lines in Tokyo in the early 1970s, including those in Asakusa, also contributed to the closure of local cinemas, diminishing the area's vibrancy. 
facing decline, locals spearheaded a revival of Asakusa. In 1967, Teruko Tobinaga, who ran a traditional soba restaurant, founded the Asakusa Ladies Association, proposing innovative ideas to rejuvenate Asakusa. They eventually introduced a double-decker London bus, purchased used from Australia. Launched in the 1978, it brought new charm to the good old Asakusa town. The Sumida River Fireworks Festival was also restarted in the same year. Despite challenges like traffic congestion and business bad manners, it remains a crucial festival for Asakusa to this day, drawing nearly 1 million visitors annually. In 1981, the Asakusa Samba Carnival was initiated, attracting about 500,000 people annually in August and becoming the largest Samba Carnival in the Northern Hemisphere through participants' efforts. These unique events in Asakusa started attracting attention on TV, and in the early 1990s, people began flocking to the town. The Kaminari Mon Gate in particular made a significant impact, elevating Asakusa and by extension Tokyo as a symbol. Asakusa is currently a major tourist destination, attracting over 50 million visitors annually, with approximately 30 million people visiting Sensoji Temple. An examination of visitor demographics reveals a significant age range. Seniors in their 60s considered 27%, whereas the younger demographic in their 20s represents a comparatively low 8%. Interestingly, the distribution of visit purposes across age groups is more similar than one might expect. For instance, temple visits are favored by 32.5% of all visitors and 29.5% of the younger demographic. Other activities such as city walking and festivals show similar trends, accounting for 24% and 21% among youth and 7% and 10% for festivals, respectively. This indicates Asakusa's broad appeal, attracting both older guests who value its culture and youth drawn to its entertainment-rich traditions. Of course, just like the Sumida Fireworks Festival, hosting events could spark social issues such as congestion and public order concerns. Yet, proactively addressing these challenges and organizing festivals that blend tradition with interactive elements, specifically designed for young Younger audiences will be pivotal for Asakusa's continued allure. While Asakusa is celebrated for its traditional and historical charm, the surrounding area boasts remarkable state of the art architecture. In this part, we will explore the modern marvels nestled around this ancient town. In 1989, across from Sensoji Temple on the banks of the Sumida River, the Asahi Group's headquarters, Asahi Beer Tower, was constructed. It is characterized by its amber colored glass and the white exterior walls as its top, designed to resemble the frothing head of beer in a beer mug. Adjacent to it, Super Dry Hall, designed by French designer Philippe Stock, was also constructed around the same time. The whole striking golden object is known as Flamme de Rome, meaning golden flame in French, symbolizing the flame of passion for Asahi beer, visualizing it into form. This object has become a popular photo spot for tourists. However, its unique design continues to provoke controversy. For me, uh, it looks like man's sp- Moving on to 2006, a new television tower project was initiated near Oshiage Station, one stop away from Asakusa. This construction began out of the need for a taller tower to supplement the traditional Tokyo Tower, which was surrounded by high-rise buildings and plagued by radio wave interference. Moreover, this tower aimed to serve not only as broadcasting infrastructure, but also as a tourist attraction, equipped with observation decks and shopping facilities. Thus, the construction plan for Tokyo Skytree was set in motion, and construction work began in July 2008. During the construction of this tower, traditional Japanese architectural techniques were incorporated. In particular, its exterior features a gentle bulge known as sori, seen in pillars of temples and shrines, and a gentle curve known as mukuri found in Japanese souls. Completed in February 2012, this tower with 634 meters in height became the second tallest structure in the world. From the Skytree's observation decks, visitors can enjoy a 360-degree panoramic view that includes Mount Fuji on clear days. The tower, along with the associated commercial facility, Tokyo Solamachi, attracts numerous tourists along with Sensoji Temple.
Another contemporary element that adds color to the town of Asakusa is the water bus that navigates the Sumida River. Tokyo Cruise Ship Company, which operates regular passenger routes on the Sumida River and Tokyo Bay, introduced a new water bus, Himiko, in 2004. Named after an ancient queen who ruled part of Japan, it was designed by Leiji Matsumoto, known for the author of the Galaxy Express 39 and space battleship Yamato. Himiko is characterized by its futuristic and avant-garde appearance, unlike traditional water buses. Following that, two sister ships of Himiko, also designed by Matsumoto, were built. Hotaruna was launched in 2012 and Emeraldus in 2018. These ships are now based in Asakusa and operate through the Sumida River, connecting various spots in Tokyo Bay, such as the Rainbow Bridge. While the Asakusa district itself is renowned for its historical atmosphere, the surrounding area is equally celebrated for architectural marvels of the Asahibiya Tower and Tokyo Sky Tree, as well as the futuristic allure of water buses like Himiko. These landmarks underscore the area's exquisite blend of traditional charm and contemporary innovation. As a tourist destination that harmoniously blends tradition with the future, Asakusa has enjoyed remarkable prosperity up to the present. Nevertheless, the pandemic has profoundly impacted the tourism industry. Concurrently, the area is now grappling with the emerging challenge of over tourism. This chapter will explore how Asakusa has addressed and is overcoming the drastic fluctuation in tourist numbers, ranging from steep declines to substantial increases. The tourism industry in Asakusa was severely impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. In 2018, the annual number of tourists, including foreigners, had reached 55 million. But by 2020, this number had decreased to 16 million, falling to less than one-fifth of its previous level. This decline had a direct economic impact, with annual tourism expenditure dropping significantly from 500 billion yen in 2018 to 120 billion yen in 2020. Furthermore, the state of emergency declared during the pandemic led to reduced opening hours and requests for early closures for restaurants and other businesses. These measures had a significant impact on economic activities in Asakusa, resulting in approximately 10% about 90 stores being forced to close. In response to these challenges, an initiative named Asakusa Takeout Delivery was launched in May 2020. This service was established in response to voices from restaurants who did not want to lose 30% of their sales to major delivery companies, and consumers who found it difficult to search for extensive takeout information on the internet. Many restaurants in Asakusa participated, attempting to adapt to the difficult situation by shifting towards takeout and delivery. These efforts bore fruit, allowing some restaurants to overcome the crisis. After the pandemic subsided and entry restrictions were lifted on April 29, 2023, the number of visitors to Japan surged. This phenomenon, known as the increase in inbound tourism, saw the number of foreign visitors to Japan exceed 2.3 million in July 2023 a 16-fold increase compared to the same month the previous year. This impact was particularly noticeable in Asakusa, where the number of foreign tourists increased significantly. However, the issue of over-tourism caused by the concentration of many tourists, especially overseas visitors, cannot be ignored in Asakusa. The increase in tourists has led to traffic congestion and overcrowding of public transportation, which may adversely affect the daily lives of local residents and led to a decline in quality of life. Furthermore, the increase in visitors contributes to more trash, worsening smoking manners, and unintentional damage to historical buildings, posing a significant threat to the preservation of Asakusa's cultural heritage. In response to these concerns, Taito Ward has been distributing stickers indicating the correct usage of toilets and pamphlets of manners for foreign tourists visiting Asakusa. As a result, toilets where these stickers have been placed are reported to be relatively clean. Furthermore, a survey conducted by Taito Ward where Asakusa is located revealed that over 80% of the residents view tourism favorably. This indicates that not all residents of Asakusa are negative towards tourists. However, in certain areas within the world, there is a higher proportion of residents who are dissatisfied with visitors. Going forward, listening to the voices of the residents and taking action for better coexistence is necessary. 
And that is the story of Asakusa. I love this place because this historical town exists and thrives in Tokyo, where the majority of areas are dominated by modern structures. A place where many people can reminisce about the good old days of Japan. Now, here is my conclusion. Asakusa features places like Sensoji, the oldest temple in Tokyo, and Nakamise Street, the oldest shopping street in Japan, symbolizing the long history of the town through its buildings and festivals. On the other hand, it also showcases a contrasting modern side with the futuristic Tokyo Sky Tree and among others. The town has also overcome numerous crises, especially the airlines and the recent pandemic. Behind its glamorous facade, the local people have repeatedly stood up and overcome existential crises. Thus, Asakusa has continually evolved its inherent resilience and unity through the changing times, discovering new charms and offering diverse experiences to its visitors with each passing era. I believe the essence of Asakusa lies in the indomitable spirit and its unique culture that weaves together tradition and innovation.